Spurs, Zach, thank you so much for being here. What has it been like for you to adjust to life without basketball in this quarantine? It's been fine. I mean, just having to get a routine, learning how to make a routine and uh, be as productive as possible. But you said you do get to go into the facility a couple times a week to keep rehabbing. And I know when this all ended, you were weeks, days, games away from your return. So give me an update on your shoulder and how ready you feel for if this thing picks back up that you'll be ready to go. Yeah, my shoulder feels really good. It's, I mean, coming like you said, coming up to that point, the next part of my rehab was still strengthening it, but it was playing and it was going through contact with the team, not just with the coaches. So unfortunately we can't do that right now, but right now it feels great and I think if my rehab continued on that track. Um, I would, I would have been playing at, at that target date. So, I'll definitely be ready for when if if this does continue. The things that Dane mentioned when we talked to him earlier last week, I think, is he feels like, you know, a team that's fighting for the eighth seed should get a shot to keep fighting for the eighth seed, and that yeah. his optimism is pretty high because getting you and Nurk back, all of a sudden, you guys are a very dangerous eight seed. Dame's always very positive, very um, uh, upbeat about everything. And he always, no matter, you know, it's been a rough season, obviously, injuries and uh, not winning games, but he's there, he still believes in this thing 100%. So when your leader is like that, it's it's contagious. But there is a play in tournament. Yeah, I think we definitely have a great shot to, to make some noise and to upset some people, especially with Nurk coming back and me coming back. Do you think the fact that you've now watch the game from the same perspective that has helped develop your relationship as well that you think you can translate that to the court maybe a little bit more yeah that's a good question i definitely think so i think i've gotten a lot closer with him i, I was always cool with nerf but i think being on the bench and being just having to talk to him about stuff and what he sees um and kind of where he is mentally with his injury kind of what he went through and then you know him being there for me and telling me you know how, how to get through some some bad days and he was big for me, and we, we kind of had that that thing that we, we could bond over, both being hurt and both not being able to play. Um, so I think we've definitely gotten closer, um, and I really do believe, you know, because we've talked about it on the bench, like, hey, when we come back, this will happen, or, you know, when we come back, we're going to do this as a team. So um, that, that stuff will translate for sure. But it sounds like what I'm hearing you saying is that you're learning things from the bench that you never would have learned had you stayed healthy this entire time. Yeah. You think that's true? And maybe everything that I've seen this year would have happened either way, mm. um, just because it's another year in the league. But uh, I definitely think not playing and not having to worry about how my body's feeling or how, uh, or what my matchup is tonight or what my job is tonight is literally you just watch the game and you hear what the coaches are saying. You're talking to the assistant coaches about when you get back, we're gonna change this about our defense. You know, like just little stuff like that. Um, I think I've, I've found a way to see the game a little bit better. I think it's about the way you're approaching injury. I think um, for me, I was like, okay, I'm injured, I can't play. How can I improve in other areas? And that's definitely one area that is, you have to be at the game, you have to be in a suit, you have to be on the bench with your teammates. Okay, just watch the game and see how you can get better. This year in particular, you had a lot of new teammates. Who was the new teammate this year that surprised you the most? Smello, for sure. Uh, I mean, you see like the perception of what the media kind of stirred up about him. Um, I don't think anybody said he was a bad teammate, but just how GM, like nobody wanted him on the team um, and they, they just didn't want to deal with him. And then, so you see that and you, you hear the fact that no, like all GMs like, no, we don't want him. And then you hear that and you're like, oh, well, maybe there's something wrong. Because obviously his talent is not in the question. But uh, when he got here, man, I mean, like that was complete opposite. Um, he's just been, you know, a great teammate. He's one of the most vocal guys I've been around in the locker room. He has so much knowledge of the game that whether it's our system or the system that he's been with, um, he's just always talking and saying terms that maybe you don't know, but he, he knows what's going on. So um, it's been great. Like I. We had a, a winery uh, get together earlier in the year that CJ kind of hosted. And um, we were sitting at the bar and just talking like for at least probably at least an hour. And I was just asking him questions about, you know, him playing and what he's seen, like how the game has changed. Um, 
what he watches on film, like just little stuff like that, like the best players he's played against, stuff like that. And it was just like, it was awesome. Just, you know, being a fan, you know, I turned into a fan for sure in that moment. And he, he didn't like shy away from the conversation. He didn't give me like one word answers. Like he didn't want to talk to me. And it was, he talked to me about that stuff. And, you know, it was great. We're going to play a game now. I'm calling it <laughs> Christmas in quarantine, sort of like Christmas in July, but Christmas in yeah. quarantine. I know you're a big Christmas guy, so I thought I would test your Christmas movie knowledge. So oh, no. I'm going to read you a quote and I want you to tell me what movie it's from. I'm a movie guy, so if I screw this up, I'm going to be pretty embarrassed. But just for just for everybody knows, this is Christmas. And if I mess it up, I still know a lot about movies. I'll start you off with a softball. You ready? I hope so. Keep the change, you filthy animal. That was easy, Home Alone. You should have saved that for later. It's like, well, I wanted to start you off easy. Build your confidence. Okay, Come on. I, I appreciate it. Anything Home Alone, I should get. One o'clock, wallow in self-pity, 4.30. Stare into the abyss. Five o'clock, solve world hunger. Tell no one. 5.30, jazzercise. Oh, shoot. Is there any hints that you can give me about this movie? Even if I wanted to attend, I couldn't because my schedule is booked. Oh, the Grinch? There you go. There it is, there it is, there it is. It was the voice, wasn't it? My Grinch impersonation. There's perfect. The Grinch <laughs> voice is perfect. How about this one? We elves like to stick to the four main food groups. Candy. That's elf. That's elf. Candy, candy canes, or yeah, because candy, candy canes are the, yeah, candy canes, candy corns, and syrup. There you go. 250 strands of light, 100 individual bulbs per strand for a grand total of 25,000 imported Italian twinkle lights. It's not National Lampoon, is it? Yes, it, it is. is. Good Let's job. Go, Let's go. <laughs> and this one is also, I think you're gonna get it pretty quick, but would it bother anyone if I worked on my cannonball? Home Alone 2, baby. Here. I had a feeling you would get that one. That was one of my favorite scenes from that movie. It's legendary, for sure. <laughs> Zach, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.